What's going on guys? Coach Matt and YouGoProBaseball.com here again with my man Fernando Cortez. We're in his facility here in Temecula, California and we're going to talk about hitting drills, some of the hitting drills that Fernando used uh, to help become a major league player, great hitter, and now that he uses with his students. So these are some really great hitting drills. I want you to pay attention because, you know, if you put these into use and use them over time, they can really help you become a better hitter. So what do you got? So one of the biggest drills that I use with a lot of my hitters, and it's not like a cookie cutter thing, like I don't just use this short bat. This is a short bat. Obviously it's gonna be smaller than what a normal size bat is. Basically the goal of this bat is to be able to isolate my bottom hand and my top hand. Now depending upon what I'm working on, I'm gonna go ahead and use this short bat so that I can control it. So for example, if I got bottom hand issues, I wanna put this bat in my bottom hand and I wanna work exactly what my bottom hand is supposed to do. A lot of people don't understand that the top hand and bottom hand have a different role, okay? And then when they get together, they gotta to work together. So if I'm working on my bottom hand, a lot of times I wanna to get to this ball, I wanna hit it, stay through, and it's also something that keeps my hands close to my body. If I'm working out here, if I got an issue working out here, then I'm already setting myself up to go around the baseball. So for example, I got kids that'll come out here in the bar out real early. If I wanna get to this ball that's middle, middle in, I gotta come right back in here. As opposed to if I stay close, I can now drag my barrel through and stay through the baseball and then I know what my bottom hand's supposed to do. So bottom hand, a lot of times, it's a real feel thing. If you can control this bottom hand and do what it's supposed to do, then you're gonna have success. Now on the top hand, I have some people that will have top hand issues when, when they swing, they roll over, they get in and out of the zone. So a lot of times with top hand, I really wanna focus on using this, getting the barrel, staying still connected to my body, hitting the ball, staying through it. If I get to this baseball and come out of the zone, an extension, doesn't occur, then the ball's not gonna fly. I'm not gonna get that backspin. I'm gonna roll over. For me, left-handed, I'm gonna roll over to first base. So the biggest thing with this is it isolates each hand. So it'll tell me what my bottom hand's supposed to do. If I'm working on something, my top hand, and when I put it together, and a lot of times I'll take swings together with the short bat, and I can control it. Now I can actually get to the ball and understand what both hands are supposed to do. So I used this drill a lot when I was a hitter. Um, I only bust this out for certain kids that need it. This isn't just like part of the routine where I'm constantly making kids do top hand, bottom hand drills. But if I see an issue that needs to be addressed with the bottom hand or needs to be addressed with the top hand, I'll bring out a short bat. Now this is a, for older kids. So I have a little shorter bats for the little kids. They'll choke up on it. And then we'll get into top hand, bottom hand drills and really focus on what they need to work on. So. That's what I use it for. That's awesome, that's a great drill. What do you got for your second drill? So second drill, what I like to do is I like to move the T way out front. And when I say way out front, a lot of times I wanna catch a ball out front so that I can really get extended on it and drive it. The deeper a ball gets in my stance, the more I'm gonna actually hit it the other way. So a lot of times I will hit a ball deep just cause maybe I'm beat, I'm late, I'm late a little bit and I can still keep it fair. I worked with Tony Gwynn for five years, um, you know, when I was still a player, and we used to put the ball real deep into our stance and really work on hitting the ball back here to hit it down the line. Because if you can hit a ball way deep this way and you can still keep it fair, you're doing, you know, you're not getting beat and you're able to handle this pitch. Now the reality is, I really want to catch the ball a little bit more out front so I can do some damage. So for the drill sake, I like to, put the ball well in front of my foot. So as you can see, if I go catch this ball, I'm catching it out front. Sometimes I'll even back up even more, almost to the point where if I swing, I wanna see if I can still stay up the middle and hit a line drive. If I'm rolling over on it, that's telling me my bat's exiting the zone too soon. So this drill, not only for me, I'm like honing in my swing in my routine, but for kids who need help staying through the ball, I purposely put this ball out front because it forces their barrel to stay in the zone a long time. So a lot of people talk about the barrel sitting in the zone for a long time. The goal is if this barrel can travel, you know, this far in the zone, you're going to have a better opportunity to actually strike the baseball. 
if it's just hitting ball and getting out of the zone real quick, you're just hitting it and you're out, you're gonna get that top spin. You're not gonna be able to push through the baseball, drive it over the outfielder's heads, go in the gap zone and so forth. So what this drill does is it's overcompensating way out front. It's forcing you to stay through the ball. It's forcing your barrel to travel from way back here all the way here. And if you can hit a ball way out front and still keep it fair up the middle, how much easier is it if I move up just a little bit, right? And catch it where you'll really probably catch it in a game. I used to work with this drill. Um, my buddy Adrian Gonzalez and his brother Edgar Gonzalez. So this was a drill we did a lot to really stay connected, stay through the baseball, get that backspin, drive it. One of my favorite drills, so when I come and hit and mess around, it's literally the one drill that I typically work on just because I know if I get in here and I start swinging, I'm cutting my swing off, I'm rolling over, I'm rolling over. So I just fix it as soon as I walk in the box. I force myself to stay behind the ball. I force myself to stay connected, to drive the baseball. And it's much easier, like I said before, when you walk up. That's awesome. So that's two drills right there. The one where you set it up deeper and then the one where you're catching it out front more. I have a question about the one out front though. Mm -hmm. Are you, when you're doing that, are you trying to like gain ground with your back foot? Like, are you really driving forward or are you more trying to manipulate your hands for, or is it a combination of both? I'm manipulating my hands. So the reality is I don't want to stride after the ball. I'm just trying to see how far I can reach with my hands because if I, if I manipulate it in a way where I'm jumping towards it, I'm really not keeping my bat in the zone as long as I really want to. I'm trying to over-exaggerate this drill. That way when I really get into a normal stance and a normal set location on the ball, I'm gonna be connected and not have that jumpy, you know, feel like I'm going forward. Because the moment I jump, a few things happen, especially in this drill, if I'm going after it, I'm losing my, my power on my backside, that's moving forward. Now I can get through a baseball, if I'm behind it, hit it and then get through, then that's good. But if I'm chasing to go get that ball first, I'm losing the power, I'm losing this. Not only that, my head's moving, which means my eyes are moving. So a lot of people like always say, well, what's moving? They're like my head. Okay, well, what does that mean? If your head is moving, that means your eyes are moving because your eyes are inside your head. Right. right. So if I do this, my eyes just move, which makes the ball look like which it's makes moving. the ball move. Right. And especially you got a guy who's already moving the ball. <laughs> right. So I want to always work behind the baseball. So what that means to me is when the ball's coming, I want to stay behind it. I want to see it. I want to hit it. And then I want to go through it. You know what I'm saying? If I go through it first, it's like two trains colliding. Right. It's going to be a mess. I want to be behind it and then explode through it. And the longer that you can sit behind the ball, too, what else that's going to do is going to translate into picking up breaking ball and picking up change up. Because if you're behind the ball and not moving forward, you can actually see that spin. You can see the rotation coming out if you didn't pick it up out of his hand. You know what I'm saying? So this drill, I'm just really manipulating my, my path and I'm just forcing it to stay in the zone, my barrel, as long as it possibly can. That way when I get in the game, my barrel continually stays in the zone long, gives me a better chance to hit the ball and make contact. And that's the biggest goal is making contact and then the results are gonna be the results. So those are three great hitting drills. You got one more hitting drill for us? I do, on a, on a ball that's being pulled, this is one that, uh, I'll give you two. So a lot of guys that cast away, we talked about that you know, before where their hands move away from each other, they're working outside the ball. A lot of times you can put the T way up, up and in on your stance and just get on the ball. So the only way that I'm gonna hit this ball up the middle, I'm forcing myself to stay up the middle, is if right in here, I'm staying inside the ball, right? So I gotta go here and I gotta stay inside. For those people who have that issue with their hands going out, they're gonna go around the ball and they're either gonna hit it right here and get jammed, or if they do hit it with the barrel, they're gonna roll over. So this is really forcing themselves to just stay inside, stay inside. You can actually do this drill with the short bat as well. So if I'm bottom hand in here, I can stay up in here and I can work bottom hand, stay here, bottom hand. And this is like fighting off that ball. It's almost like G Derek Jeter, right? So Derek Jeter like constantly worked inside the baseball, inside the baseball, inside the baseball. All I'm doing on this drill is though, is I'm over-exaggerating. All my drills I do, for the most part, I'm over-exaggerating. If I can hit this pitch up and in and I can teach myself to stay inside this ball, stay inside this ball, stay inside this ball, and I'm just peppering that routine, 
my repetition into my swing. By the time I put this ball back down and I get into a normal setup, it's gonna be so much easier to get to this ball than when I had it up and in on me. Same concept if I'm trying to pull the ball. I can go up and in and I can go just pull this baseball. A lot of times people will peel off, they'll try to use their shoulders too much because they feel like they're gonna get beat on a high and inside fastball. But if you watch like big league guys, they can hit a ball that's gonna hit them. Barry Bond used to get up on the plate. And he's here, he had his, you know, his elbow guard, he's on the plate, he's got plate coverage. And you come in here and he's gonna hit that ball way out front and put it into the bay, right? Those guys that can understand how to get their hands to the baseball right out front, they're working on stuff in here. If I can get to this ball and I can just fight it off, fight it off, fight it off, it's so much easier when it becomes real gameplay. You know what I mean? So a lot of drills I do are over-exaggeration drills. That way when we go back to normal stance, normal depth, normal everything, it should be so much easier. So I'm just trying to like dial the person. If they're way off with their hands off, I'm going to bring it way in and force them, force them, force them. That way, you know, we can meet in the middle and then all of a sudden they got a nice clean swing. That's great. And you're using this for specific players with specific issues and only some of the time. And you're kind of, you know, not every hitting drill is for every single hitter, nope. right? Yeah, like that drill right there, I might not have used that with my last four students. Right. Now there's other students where literally I will pepper this drill, I will work on this drill because of the issues that they have. So like the swings that I'm creating, I'm not creating swings. I'm not creating this cookie cutter, you know, like this is how you're supposed to swing. Everybody has, like, I'll look at a, like, or a first time client or kid, I'll put a, the tee down, I'll put the balls down and I'll start feeding. I'll go, I'm just gonna watch you for like 30 swings. I just wanna watch what you do. And as soon as I start seeing the pattern of their swing, their movements, what their issue is, a lot of times it's different from the other kid. Sometimes it's the same, so I know how to address it, right? Um, and then at some point I'm gonna get everybody back to the same spot, which is basically trying to get in a good hitting position, which we'll talk about. But for the most part, every drill that I do that I pull out is completely different unless that student has the same problem as another student. That's awesome. Now I see you got a T set up down here yep. and one here. What do you do in this hitting drill? So for this, there's a couple things I do. This is a physical and a mental drill, right? At the end of the, uh, my lesson, typically what I like to do, I put this up here maybe for like the, le the last 10 minutes or so. And what I'm trying to accomplish here is a few things. One, I want back control. When I get in a cage, most of the time, if I'm not working on pulling the ball or going the other way, I'm trying to go up the middle. The reason why I'm trying to go up the middle is because it keeps me square. It keeps my body square. The pitcher's right up the middle. If I can hit balls up the middle, then it's gonna be super easy for me to go gap to gap, line to line, right? So one thing is I'm trying to have them continually work up the middle, up the middle, but then also I wanna work on back control. A lot of people don't talk about back control. I was the type of guy where I got in BP and you know, I take my round to seven. I would always tell my hitting coach, where do you want them? You know, like this, I like open round to five, open round to seven. Okay, well, do you want me to pull three of them, hit two the other way? So I used to say, and I would talk it, I'd say, I'm gonna hit two to left, two to center, two to right. And then I would go left, left, center, center, right, right, because I'm working on my back control. Because in the game, at some point, you're gonna need to control where you're gonna hit the ball. I'm a left-handed hitter. There's a runner on first base. Between first and second, there's a hole. Why would I not pull it in between first and second if I can get an easy hit, right? So I gotta be able to understand how to have back control. So with this drill, I'm putting the ball on top of that tee, the tee's on top of the bucket. I'm trying to hit line drives. This ball has to hit that ball. If it hits the tee, it doesn't count. If it hits the bucket, it doesn't count. If it hits the net and the net comes back and knocks the ball down, it doesn't count. The only way it counts is if this ball travels in the air, hits that ball, knocks it down, and then you win. So typically what I'll do is, I'll actually play against my students. And I don't, and I don't like take it easy on them. I don't care if they're seven, I don't care if they're 17. They get to play against me. So now I'm building confidence and I'm building someone who can now be competitive. All at the same time, we're working on bat path, we're working on you know, hitting balls up the middle, bat control. A lot of times they don't hit that ball, but they're peppering around, they're hitting line drive, line drive, line drive, line drive, and those are all swings I'll take. So, the, so sometimes they're getting down on themselves because they're not winning the game, 
but the reality is they're taking great swings and at the end of it I go hey will you take those seven line drives that you just hit but you didn't hit the ball and they're like yeah I'm like that's all I care about so I'm kind of manipulating the situation too to where physically I'm getting them to stay connected hit line drives create that backspin and then occasionally if they do hit the ball then you know obviously the confidence is up but for the most part they're failing not hitting the ball so now I'm teaching them how to pick themselves up I'm like it's okay it's okay I gotta like bring them back in you know what I mean so a lot of things I'm doing with this drill trying to stay physically connected line drives up the middle back control confidence I'm building some competitiveness because they get to face me right and they want to beat me so I'm gonna beat coach and a lot of times I just don't take it easy on them I've been beat before though so you got a chance. That's awesome, man. I love that. I love that last one for sure, just because of all the aspects that it brings into it. Um, cool stuff. That's five baseball hitting drills for you guys. Take it from former major leaguer, great hitter. Um, and if you guys are ever in the SoCal area and you want to try to, try to come beat them, come beat them. Let's go. <laughs> give them a call. I'm ready. Get in here and uh, see what you can do. Thank you so much for watching. Hop down in the comments below. Let us know what you thought about these hitting drills. And uh, if you want to see any more videos on hitting drills, let us know. Don't forget to subscribe to Yugo Pro Baseball. Check out at Fernando Cortez Baseball on Instagram as well as YouTube all over the other social media platforms. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Try one. Yeah. You'll take that, right? I'll take it. Especially for a PO. Hold on. Oh, yeah. All right, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> My swings for the year, right? <laughs>